everyone, welcome to the latest episode of GDB Watchpoints. Today we're going to look at how we do less typing with GDB. If you're like me and very lazy, um, you want to do as little typing as you can. Of course, GDB is a command line tool uh, and we interact with it by, by, by typing at the command line. Um, but you know, there, there you can be quite verbose, um, but you can abbreviate things quite nicely. So let's let's just show some examples of this that I find uh, very useful. We're going to start with. Um, I'm just going to take any old. Doesn't matter what the, um, the program is. We're going to use Funks2 that we did uh, last time. I'm just going to compile that and load that up into uh, GDB. So often at this point we type run, right? And we probably want to stop at main, so we put a breakpoint at main and type run. Well, if you're um, wanting to save just a little bit of typing, we can instead type start and that's going to put a temporary breakpoint at main and run uh, the program okay all good uh, i can obviously do uh, a, a next um, command um, I, or you probably almost certainly know this i can do n rather than next n is is uh, is a sort of well-known um, abbreviation um it's a defined abbreviation n for short for next similarly c short for continue uh, um, and uh, um, si for step i um, if you're using reversible debugging you can do uh, rsi for reverse step i and so um, we're not doing reversible debugging here but but that is an abbreviation of that command right um, and it just makes me laugh because rsi helps with the art it helps you have less rsi ha 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 um, Actually, we can abbreviate any command just by typing enough characters so that it sort of disambiguates it. Um, so, of course, this n doesn't disambiguate next, right? So that's a kind of predefined uh, alias. There's, there's lots, you could, could be uh, many commands. Um, uh, so let's maybe take start. So could I do st? Does that, is that a, if, I, if that would sort of uniquely disambiguate um, start, then I could just do st. However, if I do that, of course, with step, um, and other commands like stack and and and, uh, and the like. So uh, st does not disambiguate start. Um, actually, oh look, there's a thing called start i. Um, so even to to disambiguate start, you have to kind of do start. Um, start i is an interesting one. Just while we're here, um, uh, uh, which is kind of cool. Um, so rather than put a breakpoint on main and, and, and run to that, start i. If I do that, I'm going to restart the program. And what this does is takes me to the very first instruction the program executes after it's exec. So um, if I want to debug something that happens before main, for example, this could be very useful. Um, if I'm just curious about how Linux applications kind of get started and all that stuff that happens before main gets called, that's kind of kind of cool as well. But maybe also I don't have a main, right? If you if you um, if your if your binary is stripped and you don't have symbols, you, you can't put a breakpoint on main. So that can be useful as well. Um, anyway, that's a bit of a diversion because we're here really to talk about. Um, uh, to talk about uh, how to uh, sort of do less typing, um, so I'm going to put that. Let's put let's do what main what start does. So it puts the temporary breakpoint uh, on main. That's a little bit of saving of typing, right? Because I don't have to delete my breakpoint after I've hit it, and I'm going to continue um, like that. So um, what else? Well, of course, you probably know this. If I go up arrow, I get my command history, right? I can cycle through the commands that I've done and down arrow to go back down. Which is very useful. Um, I can actually do the same with Control P for previous and Control N for next. So Control P is the same as up arrow. Control N is the same as down arrow. Unless I'm in TUI mode, right? So let's just I, we'll do another episode about all the different IDEs and, and different interfaces for interacting uh, with GDB. But so very very quickly, Control X A gets me into TUI mode. Very useful little feature. Uh, uh, but you know, one thing is, if I go up arrow now, I'm just using and down arrow. Look, I'm just moving my code up and down in the window. Similarly, left and right, just moves it left and right. Okay, well that's um, you know useful for what it does, but I don't want to have to retype all my commands all the time. But of course, I can still go Control P and Control N. And you'll remember, um, the uh, 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 left um, arrow doesn't help me go left in my command line, but I can go Control B and Control A. Um, uh, to, uh, sorry, Control B to go backwards, or Control F uh, to go forwards. Uh, Control A takes me to the beginning of the line. Control E takes me to the end of the line. Uh, so that's sort of quite, quite helpful. Um, the other thing you can do, and you may be familiar with this if you use Bash or, or some of those command lines, you can do Control R to search the history. Right. So Control R like this. And now let's say um, I'm going to do st it's going to give me this. I'm going to Control R and, and look through that history. Um, so now, what's that's how? Where's that come from? So now I've, I've done this, this. What am I doing here? Well, let's have a look at this command. So I'm 
I'm just taking a stack pointer. So dollar $SP is a convenience variable. Again, I can do less, that helps me do less uh, typing, right? So info, if I want another stack pointer, I can do info reg. Um, um, but, uh, and look at it. Oh, but it's not even there. So I'm gonna go inco info reg and that end again. So where is it? Somewhere gone off the top of my window. What a pain. Anyway, well, rather than looking through all that, I can just um, print uh, uh, RSP and I can do things with it. Now, you've probably noticed this, that every time you print something in, in, in GDB, you get this, this automatic kind of convenience variable, right? So this is $4. So if I print now $4, Right, so that's kind of that's kind of useful. So now that I've got this longer command, so it's a bit more typing, so I can sort of show the utility of this. So this is what I was getting at before. So I'm going to go print, because I could just do p as an alias of print, um, and let's let's cast the stack pointer uh, to a, a, a long and then dereference it. But I'm going to go to 28 bytes off the top of the stack pointer. Okay, um, so there we go. So I'm just doing that as a, something that's like a non-trivial expression. Um, uh, and so, yeah, if I go Control R and L O N, it gives me that, and uh, uh, I can enter uh, to run that command. So Control R very useful if you've got some sort of large amount of typing, perhaps a long time ago, you want to go straight back to it rather than like Control P or up arrow all the way through that command history. Um, the uh, 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 what else were we talking about? Oh, you were talking about convenient variables, right? So when I print that um, here. It gives this dollar six, so that's just what happens to be on the stack, right? Um, but I can sort of do things by that, right? So I can print. I'm not going to. I'll be doing this. So I could be a p to short for print. Dollar six. I don't know times two, right? And that's the. So so I can. Um, you might actually get a, a type that's a pointer, and you, you can then dereference it, right? So um, if I just print the stack pointer, okay, and now I can dereference. Like that, so that's quite cool. Saves me some typing, or saves me some 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 copying and pasting. Um, uh, now, let's uh, going to go Control R, and I'm going to type long. So we go through. So these are the things, and I've Control R, Control R again. I'm going to go through all the commands in my command history. Oh, now that's not in my command history, right? Break my funk long. What's going on there? Well. Um, if you uh, saw the previous episode of this screencast, you you might recognise that. That's a command I typed in an iteration of this GDB some time ago. So how did I get there? Well, this is actually really useful, right? Um, so I'm going to just quit out of GDB. Control D um, to, to Control D to quit. Less typing. Uh, I can do Control D again when it asks the Y or N. Uh, and uh, uh, I'm going to let's look at. Uh, my GDB init file, All right? So GDB init file is going to just get sourced at the beginning of GDB. Mine is very small. It has one line in it, set history save on, but super useful, right? So what this means is every time GDB quits, it's going to save the history into a history file. And then every time it starts, it's going to load that history back up. So now I get my command history across multiple invocations of GDB. The default place for that is in the, in the current working directory uh, dot, uh, uh, dot GDB history. So here it is. So here's my GDB history of the stuff we've just seen um, down the bottom here, um, but going up, these are kind of to previous uh, previous commands I've run. So that's when I've, all the times I've invoked GDB from this local, from this current working directory. If I wanted to have a common GDB history that I shared across all my GDB sessions, regardless of where I started it from, I can do this. Um, I can uh, set history file. Uh, you know, and I can like home gel uh, GDB hits, right? Let's say like that. And what that would do is is um, uh, just use a common file across all all GDB history, all um, uh, uh, all my GDB sessions. Um, but I actually quite like the feature of it just being in the current working directory because you tend to be working on like one of those things when you're there. So that's why I do uh, that. I think that's probably enough about how to do um, less typing. Uh, thank you very much and um, stay tuned for subsequent episodes. Bye bye.